Hey, if you want to make money online by selling stuff you can see at stores, this video is for you. My name is Blake. I am a full-time entrepreneur, and what I'm talking about today is five Yahoo! hot Christmas candy items, bolos, uh, that stands for be on the lookout for things you can buy in stores and sell online on Amazon or on eBay. I choose Amazon, but these things are all selling for a profit on eBay as well. And if it's past Christmas, don't turn off the video, watch it, because guess what? The trends I'm talking about, you can apply them to Christmas, to Mother's Day, to Valentine's Day, to any holiday where you're buying candy. And if you want to take it broader, you can apply it to any kind of product, really, because the things we're seeing that make a certain Pez dispenser sell for more than a other Pez dispenser, it's not just random. There are trends to it, and I'm going to uncover those trends as we go through this short video. The first item is a Sella's 16 count. This is the dark chocolate version. If you go to a Walmart, you're going to see lots of different sizes of Sella's chocolate covered cherries. There's also different brands. Uh, I've seen Queen Anne's cherries quite a bit at Kroger and Walmart, but Sella's is the brand that's selling pretty good. There are dark chocolate and milk chocolate. I have milk chocolate later in the video. Uh, with these, what you have to be aware of is that it's the 16 count. And I think the reason that this is so popular is because, one, I don't know if it's being distributed across the whole country. I think the 16 count might only be in the Midwest. I'm not totally sure, but just based on buying patterns, I think that's probably true. And secondly, it's the size. These are perfect size to go into a stocking over your fireplace. Is that a, a hearth? I don't know what it's called, but whatever it is, they're perfect for the stockings. I think probably the milk chocolate is a more of a stocking stuffer than the dark chocolate, but they still sell really good. And I like that these only weigh eight ounces too, because we're shipping them first class mail. I just pop them in a poly bag and ship them out. The next one, I'd say it's a no brainer, but sometimes stuff that seems like a no brainer is produced in such large quantities that it's not profitable. So we all know that baby Yoda is huge, the most popular baby probably of all time. Maybe Baby Jesus, I don't know. So the Baby Yoda, Pez, and also there's the Mandalorian, but let's be honest, we're all, the only people, the only person that, it is, the only creature that people want is the Baby Yoda. Right there, so small, filled with candy. Uh, this is going for about 15 to 25 bucks on Amazon. You can put these in a poly mailer. Um, I am bubble wrapping mine because I'm kind of concerned maybe collectors are buying these. I don't know why a collector would buy this, I, but you know I don't I don't question that at this point. I just try and make sure that the boxes are all in good condition uh, if they have any sort of like collectible uh, value. You know, movie stuff, video game stuff, anything that has to do with like characters that are in pop culture. So I just recently found out that chocolate covered cherries is a tongue twister for me. So this is like the 15th take. The reason I included it, uh, not just to prove my efforts worthwhile, <laughs> is because I wanted to talk about the nuances that exist in retail arbitrage. If you just went out and bought all the chocolate covered cherries you could, you would not be making money. It's the specific brand Sella's, and even in this case, both dark chocolate and milk chocolate are profitable, but milk chocolate is less profitable than dark chocolate. It sells more units, so maybe overall it's more profitable, but you have to be aware of the small little differences in packaging, uh, certainly in brands. Like for, for instance, I bought a bunch of Super Mario Pez dispensers when I was buying the Yoda dispensers. Turns out that I had the wrong listing, they were very similar, but it was for a two pack and I just didn't notice that. That kind of stuff happens all the time. Retail arbitrage is a, uh, a game of details. You have to be very detail oriented to make sure you have the right product. If you're on social media at all, you've seen the, the next two products probably, for sure the last product. There were actually three of these, I'm gonna call them milk chocolate spheres. I'm gonna call them cocoa balls. I'm gonna call them a lot of things and you're just gonna roll with it because like I said, this is like my 15th take. Uh, so <laughs> these chocolate, hot chocolate balls, you heat up milk and you put these, uh, you wrap off the wrapping paper. They've got like tin foil, like an ornament. You wrap that off, you put it in your milk and uh, on the inside is a marshmallow. On these, it's a SpongeBob. I guess it's only a pineapple. It isn't a SpongeBob. It's a pineapple marshmallow. And on the second one, it's going to be a little Yoda marshmallow. Uh, there's actually three versions of this. One is the LOL doll. And those are not selling for a profit. Remember like one or two years ago, 
when the uh, LOL doll stuff was selling for so much money. Well, now it's not. Um, and that just shows you, though, that, you know, even though some things are good uh, one year, two year, three years, if the uh, dynamics change of the product, like in this case, they began making more and more and more. Um, it kind of became, I don't want to say old, but just, you know, times are moving. Um, that isn't to say that SpongeBob or Star Wars are, are new, uh, new cultural events, but just things, things always move. And uh, I think really the main reason why these are profitable isn't necessarily to do with Star Wars or SpongeBob, although that certainly does help. Um, it's because they're made by a small company. They're made by Gallery, Candy and Confection, something like that. I think they're in Indiana. They're certainly in the Midwest, and they're not being distributed all around the country. And so if you want these Star Wars, this one especially is going for like 25, 35 bucks. If you want that, you're going to have to either drive to Michigan or Indiana or wherever you are, or buy it online. And when those uh, circumstances arise, the possibility and the potential for huge profits is right around the corner. Um, I only found about 25 of these. They were sold out pretty fast. But if you find, it, find this for sure, uh, buy it because it'll pay for your groceries, you know, or at least part of your groceries. Okay, now the winner of $25 sent to your PayPal for me is the comment uh, right here. I asked you what would you do to make money online in my last video called how to monetize small YouTube channels without AdSense. Now it's time for our $25 PayPal giveaway. And uh, to win this, you have to be subscribed to my channel and you have to leave a comment. What's the comment this time? I want to hear which of these five candies you have seen in your grocery store. Comment with that. Uh, anything else you want to say, I read all the comments, you can talk to me, I'll give advice there. If you want more, I go live every Wednesday around noon Eastern Standard Time and answer questions about anything online money making related. I've made money in a lot of different ways and I can probably help you do it for free, not some $2,000 bullshit course. Nothing shady, just me trying to help you earn a living online. That's the video, folks. Watch the next one if it's for me. If it's not for me, click off and go to my channel and watch that. See you guys later, and as always, don't be a shithead.